Hi, in this video I will explain what happens to a moving charge when placed in a magnetic field. In my previous video I introduced the equation F equals B I L, which can be used to determine the force experienced by a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. In reality it is the flowing electrons inside the wire that are experiencing this force. So what happens if we just get rid of that wire and have free moving electrons instead? These moving electrons will experience a force. In F equals B I L, I is the electric current or the charge per unit time and L is the length of the wire. If we replace the current with Q over T this gives us F equals B Q L divided by T. We can also write this as F equals B Q L over T. Since L is the displacement that these charges are moving through and T is the time it takes for them to move, L over T is equal to the velocity so we can say that F equals B Q V. So for any charged particle moving perpendicular to a magnetic field the force can be calculated by F equals B Q V where B is our flux density in Teslas, Q is our charge in Coulombs and V is our velocity in meters per second. In which direction will this force act? Well just like the force in a wire we should use Fleming's left hand rule however it's very important to remember that the current here is the conventional current i.e. the flow of positive charge. So that means that if we wanted to apply Fleming's left hand rule to negative charges that are moving in a magnetic field, for example electrons, we need to point the current finger in the opposite direction to the charge's movement. It's really important to remember that. So if we fire a beam of charged particles into a magnetic field, what shape will their path take? Since the magnetic force is always perpendicular to the direction of motion, no work is done on the particles. The perpendicular force acts as a centripetal force causing the particles to undergo circular motion. Since F equals B Q V and for circular motion the centripetal force F is equal to M V squared over R, we can equate these to get B Q V is equal to mv squared over r. Cancelling v and rearranging for r, this gives us r is equal to mv divided by bq. This tells us that the radius of the circular path that these charges will take is proportional to their mass and to their velocity and inversely proportional to the strength of the magnetic field, the magnetic flux density, and their charge. If we were to fire an electron and a proton into the same uniform magnetic field, how would their paths differ? Firstly consider Fleming's left hand rule. Remember that the second finger refers to the conventional current. So you'll need to point it against the direction of motion for the negatively charged electron, but with the direction of motion for the positively charged proton. The field finger will point in the same direction into the page here in both cases. This means that the two particles will experience forces in opposite directions. The proton will experience a force upwards while the electron experiences a force downwards. But what about the radius of the paths that they'll follow? Well because R is equal to mv over bq we know that the velocity of both particles is the same. We also know that the field strength is the same for both particles and that a proton and an electron both have the same magnitude of charge. The only difference between them is the mass. Protons have a much larger mass than electrons so they will therefore move in a much larger circle than the electrons. This little example is an illustration of how useful magnetic fields can be in particle physics because they can be used to help identify particles from their properties. Applying magnetic fields to a cloud chamber can produce patterns like this when particles pass through. 